नेक्स्ट सिटी रीजन इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड स्पीयर ऑफ इंडियंस और आमलैंड इन जर्मनी और हिंटरलैंड और अर्बन फील्ड और कैचमेंट एरिया सो दीज आर डिफरेंट मीन्स फॉर सिटी रीजन सो एज वी नो सिटी इज़ नॉट आइसोलेटेड रीजन इट इज़ अ यूनिफाइड रीजन सो वॉट इज द मेन इशू इज हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई वेयर द सिटी एंड एंड वेयर द रूरल लैंडस्केप स्टार्ट वी हैव थ्री मेथड्स फर्स्ट वन इज यूजिंग पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी एंड लैंड यूज पैटर्न सेकेंड इज सिम्पली यूजिंग द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव बाउंड्री एंड थर्ड वन इज यूजिंग द कंजम्पन पैटर्न दैट इज डिमेंड फॉर गोड्स एंड सर्विसेज सो फर्स्ट टू मेथड्स आर वेरी ईजी एंड बट दे डू नॉट गिव द करेक्ट पिक्चर दिस मेथड इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट बट इट गिवस ए बेटर पिक्चर ऑफ द स्पेयर ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंस सो वॉट इज स्पेयर ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंस इट इज इफ अ पर्सन हु इज लिविंग इन द रूरल लैंडस्केप he is able to get the services from the urban area then he is said to be living in the sphere of influence of that <coughs> city so consumption pattern is the best thing to identify the sphere of influence but there are five problems with this using the consumption pattern uh, first of all which goods and services to select and what techniques to demarcate the boundary next the goods and services they are of dynamic nature for example data uh, in 1990s no one used to consume data now the people who consume more data are said to be more urban next we have the in ict and modern transport they make the <coughs> demarcating sphere of influence even more difficult in ancient times there was a fort and there is agriculture fields then the forest so it was easy to demarcate but due to the ict and modern transport it is difficult to demarcate and we have overlapping spheres of spheres of influence first of all influence <coughs> follows distance decay law with respect to distance so as the distance from the city increases its influence keep on keeps on decreasing but as we can see this part uh, has influence of both city a and city b so how to demarcate this is also a challenge so actually why you demarcate the city region first one is utility based for better administration for better traffic management and congestion management and anticipate migration and make amenities for them how which goods and services to produce and which are in demand and how to plan land use patterns and second is academic interest because the complex techniques are used to in geography to demarcate city regions so we have two types of methods qualitative and quantitative these are descriptive and subjective these are more objective these are not standardized since they use data and mathematical operations they are standardized they do not use any data and mathematical operations example is rl singh method who uh, <coughs> uses the skyline method here proximal boundary method tyson polygon and gravity methods so first let's see arl singh method he used this to demarcate city region of varanasi first of all the methods used by him are questionnaire and survey using the questionnaire and survey he gets insights about city about where varanasi gets its vegetables milks and grains and where varanasi supplies newspaper bus service medicine and education services and administrative services so using this uh, survey and questionnaire he uses the apples calendar method to it in it he ran he calculates range of goods and services for each of the six data so he draws six irregular polygons for the six data next he superimposes all polygons using a median line for example all these are there so he calculates all them and he calculates the median line to this one so he similarly does the same thing for each polygon and then several dots are came all these dots are connected and this will be the sphere of influence of the varnas as we can see Jaunpur, Mirzapur, Ghazipur, and Azampur. All these are in, within the sphere of influence of Varanasi, and Sasaram is out of the <coughs> uh, sphere of influence of Varanasi. So goods and services he considers are vegetables and milk, grains, newspaper, bus service, medical and education services, and administrative services. What are the issues with this method? Uh, re reliability of the survey, dynamic goods uh, nature of goods and services, over simplification of the boundaries. So these are the three issues. Next we have the a uh, method of proximal boundaries here there are three steps first we have to plot all the cities of the similar size and hierarchy so that is the first step we have a b c d e and f next to join the main city we want <coughs> whose sphere of influence we want to demarcate with all the other cities with straight lines next uh, draw the perpendicular bisectors of these lines and join all these points so that this will be the sphere of influence of the city a uh, so what is the basic principle behind this is perpendicular bisector is taken as a breaking point of influence of cities of equal area that is a person living on this side of the perpendicular bisector will go to f for services and a person on this side will go to the a so that is the basic principle in here and there are two limitations first of all flat for flat surface assumed for example if there is a mountain here person living here won't go to b rather he would go to a only and second the economic competition with other com settlement complexes like if there is another settlement complex here this is not considered in this method next we have tyson polygon method 
This is also very similar to polytoxic one boundary in that it uses it also considers cities of similar hierarchy and it also uses the perpendicular bisector as the breaking point of influence. But the main difference is that in this method we can plot uh, city regions of two or more cities at one time. Like we can see here we can plot only for one city. So Tyson polygon method. The steps are first uh, uh, plot the similar cities that is A, B, C, D, and E which are of similar size of influence. Next edge of the map is drawn on the basis of subjective basis uh, like survey or etc. We draw the edge of the map that is uh, <coughs> beyond this there won't be any influence of any of these cities. Next we join all these cities using a straight lines and make a polygon. We draw perpendicular uh, bisectors for each side of the polygon and join them with the, these perpendicular uh, bisectors are joined to the edge of the map and also the center so these would be the city regions of each city so last method we have the gravity method this is also the statistical method so there are two theories given here breaking point theory given by Stewart and uh, theory of retail trade given by the Rayleigh so this is basically social physics that is application of laws of physical sciences to social sciences in this method we are applying the Newton's laws of gravitation which is f equal to g into m1 m2 by r square here mass is replaced by population and radius is uh, replaced by the distance so a planet if there are two planets and there is a body here the force exerted by these two planets would be equal similarly there are two cities with population p and pb the influence in, in uh, <coughs> exerted by both these cities would be similar here so to get the distance we use this formula that is d by 1 no, 1 plus root over pa by pb this at this point uh, <coughs> the influence would be same so person living on here would go here and person living here would go here so Stewart uses Stewart's breaking point theory. It uses population size to measure the attractiveness of city. But the issue is that if you are comparing a small city and huge village, the population of the village will be higher. But obviously this is more urban. So that is the problem to fix that. Uh, Riley gave his theory of the retail trade, where he considers size of retail trade as measure of attractiveness rather than the population size.